a hypostatic union Jesus is not a sufficient Jesus when faced with the trials and temptations of this life. A God-man, a two-natured person, both human and divine, cannot fully relate to my human struggles since he never faced such trials and temptations as a human being alone. A hypostatic union Jesus is not the most humble Jesus in that he didn't give up the maximum that he could have by adding flesh to his pre-existent divinity. What did he really sacrifice by retaining his divinity and simply adding humanity to it? Due to the retention of his divinity, he was still lofty and higher in status and being than anyone else due to being a two-natured person. A hypostatic union Jesus is not a true substitutionary Jesus in representing the human race in redemption. You see, at the cross, as a person, he didn't really die because divinity can't die. Thus, he didn't experience death the way a normal human being experiences death, where the dead are said to be sleeping and not conscious at all. A hypostatic union Jesus is not an accurate portrayal of Jesus as taught by the apostles and the earliest Christians after them. They didn't subscribe to the two natures view. Rather, they saw Jesus as God's only begotten Son, begotten by the Father before creation, Yahweh's agent, his messenger, his intermediary to interact with mankind all throughout the Old Testament scriptures, who could bear the name of Yahweh because he shared in the essence of Yahweh. That one became flesh. That one gave up the maximum that he could have in becoming a man with all its limitations and frailties. And that is a Jesus worthy of our highest esteem and worship, not the Jesus of the hypostatic union.